Starship is gearing up for its second integrated flight test, and the excitement is palpable. Booster 9 has successfully completed its pre-flight testing, and it's now eagerly waiting for its partner to join in for the second launch. Ship 25, having undergone testing a few months ago, has already checked off some crucial boxes. The only things left on the checklist are full-stack testing and securing that all-important regulatory approval for the second flight. Following an initial static fire on August 6 that didn't go quite as planned, SpaceX didn't skip a beat. They carried out a second fire on August 25th. During the first attempt, four engines decided to call it quits prematurely cutting the static fire short at just 2.74 seconds, whereas it was supposed to go on for almost 5 seconds. SpaceX swiftly removed the booster from the orbital launch mount and transported it back to the production site. What came next was the installation of a 6-foot-high ring, the hot staging ring, a crucial piece of the puzzle for enabling hot staging of the upper stage. This ring has specially designed openings to release exhaust from the six engines beneath the ship while it remains attached to the booster. With the hot staging ring securely in place, the booster made its way back into the spotlight. This time it featured engine protection around the engines, providing a shield during transport. In the past, some engines had taken a bit of a beating during transport in Boca Chica, but this new setup aims to prevent such damage. Now, for the exciting part, the second fire on August 25th seemed to be a significant improvement over the first attempt. According to SpaceX, all 33 engines of the booster roared to life. This was quite a feat, as no previous static fire of Super Heavy had managed to ignite all engines. Only two engines shut down shortly after ignition, while 31 powered through the entire five-second duration. The introduction of the new deluge system and deflector plate had a substantial impact on power suppression. Comparing shots from above, it's clear that the flames and thrust were much tamer compared to Booster 7's static fire. Aside from some minor damage to installations, like a nearby fence, the overall area remained in good shape after the test. Following this test, Booster 9 underwent high-engine static fires, two spin primes, and three cryogenic proof tests. This pales in comparison to the more than 20 tests performed on Booster 7, showcasing how SpaceX has streamlined the validation process for these vehicles. The booster is now on track to wrap up its single-stage test campaign, paving the way for the stacking of Ship 25 on top of it. As for Ship 25, it's been patiently waiting at the rocket garden since being rolled back in preparation for Booster 9's static fire. Its first and only static fire of all six Raptor engines took place on June 26th, and much of the recent work has focused on Thermal Protection Systems, or TPS. While the TPS work was mostly completed before the static fire campaign, the ship still sported crane lifting points. However, as these are no longer needed, SpaceX has been in the process of removing them. These openings are crucially being filled with TPS tiles to ensure the ship can withstand the heat of re-entry. In a branding move similar to Ship 24, SpaceX has now added its company logo to Ship 25. The serial number print might follow suit if SpaceX opts for a similar branding strategy. Looking ahead, the next steps for the ship include the transport of self-propelled modular transporters back to the launch site and the stacking on Booster 9, likely happening late this week or early next week. Given the swift turnaround time of Booster 9, stacking could be completed in less than 12 hours from the start of the initial rollout. What's next in SpaceX's playbook? Well, that's still up in the air. One potential path involves a wet dress rehearsal to thoroughly validate ship and booster, ground infrastructure, and countdown software. During this rehearsal, the vehicle would go all the way to T-10 seconds similar to Booster 7 and Ship 24, before aborting the simulated launch sequence. This would necessitate extensive safety measures, including a significant methane load. Evacuation plans for Boca Chica Village and a flight-like exclusion zone around the launch site would be on the agenda. Alternatively, SpaceX might opt for a cryo test of the entire stack, validating its integrity after all the shuffling around since the last tanking. Ultimately, whether SpaceX chooses one, both, or none of these tests will depend on their internal needs and requirements. As of now, SpaceX is still keeping us in suspense about their final decision. As for the hardware readiness, things are looking promising on that front. Booster 9 has been prepped and is raring to go. 
However, there's a catch. We've still got some unanswered questions in the regulatory department. The FAA or Federal Aviation Administration is in the process of wrapping up its investigation into Starship's first flight. Once that investigation report gets the green light, the FAA can weigh in on whether it's safe for Starship to take to the skies again, based on all the available documentation. Now here's the kicker. Neither SpaceX nor the FAA has spilled the beans on when this process will reach its conclusion. So it's a bit of a waiting game, and it's not crystal clear whether the regulatory timeline will align with SpaceX's hardware readiness for flight number two. SpaceX has begun briefing Mariner safety boards about a potential flight on September 8th for Starship. It's important to note that this doesn't necessarily sync up with the FAA report. It seems more like a placeholder date that SpaceX is crossing its fingers for right now. Considering the intricate details of flight restrictions and the importance of informing the locals, there are still a few puzzle pieces missing. SpaceX will, of course, notify the residents of Boca Chica well ahead of a potential flight, ensuring a smooth and safe evacuation procedure before the big day. But that's not all that's cooking in the SpaceX kitchen. To turbocharge Starship production, SpaceX is going all in on expanding the Star Factory at Starbase, Texas. It's like making room for a grand feast and SpaceX isn't holding back. They're clearing the path by removing some substantial structures that were in the way of this expansion. Last week, the SpaceX team pulled off a double whammy. First, they bid farewell to the tent near Mid-Bay, where they had stashed dozens of Raptor 2 engines. These tents are where the magic happens, the production and storage of Starship components. The Mid-Bay also met its fate and was demolished. Now, you might be wondering what's inside the large box they carted off to the Starlink building. It's probably holding a Starlink 5-2 satellite or some of its crucial components. SpaceX has big plans for Starship when it comes to launching those beefier Starlink V-2 satellites into the cosmos. Intriguingly, Starlink 5-2 satellites made their first appearance at Starbase back in November last year, right around the time when Gwyn Shotwell took the reins of this SpaceX Starship development and launch facility. And there's more. Several other container-sized boxes made their way to Starbase, though the contents remain a mystery for now. They might be housing tooling parts for the Star Factory, all in the name of speeding up the Starship production line. So clearly there's a lot going on. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.